Vishnu Priya's presence is very much in your home. You're, it's Vishnu Priya uh, Janna Stala. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Where are you going? Oh. 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 Shri Srila A.C. Bhakti Vedanta Swami Maharaj Prabhupad Nitya Pravishtam Vishnupad Paramahansa Stattarasata Shri Srila Bhakti Rakshak Sridhar Goswami Maharaj <coughs> and Nitya Lila Pravishtam Vishnupad Paramahansa Stattarasata Shri Srila Bhakti Vedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj My Dandavat pronounced to all to the lotus feet of all of my Sri Sri Rupa Nuga Guru Varga, and especially on this transcendental appearance day of Srila Jiva Goswami, I offer my unlimited Dandavat pranams at his lotus feet. And on this Vaman Vadashi day, we all offer our Dandavats 
to Sri Ramana Dev, who came and performed the pastime of cheating, Chalayasi. Srila hmm? Bhakti Vigyan Bharati Maharaj explained that the Lord's cheating is also full of mercy and compassion. So, and he cheated Bali Maharaj, we didn't tell because of the shortness of time, but he placed his third foot on his head and then he pushed him down to the hellish regions, right? And, uh, but Bali Maharaj tolerated. And then also Prahlad Maharaj came there and, and also gave his benedictions to his descendants. So in that line, two very great personalities, mm-hmm. Prahlad Maharaj and Bali Maharaj. And this uh, third foot came from his yeah, navel. that's right. He manifested it from his lotus navel. <laughs> and he can manifest from anywhere. So in my Dandavat pronounced to all the Vaishnavas and to all the Vaishnavas. So Jiva Goswami, we're going to speak something about him. Let me just first find this because I forgot that I have it on my phone, Shiva Bharti Maharaja's. So I can't use that. So I'm going to read from the uh, book of Srila Bhakti Balabhatirtha Maharaj. Right? From that book. Looking in the in the database here, I used to have it. Autofocal works. Historical works. Contemporary authors. Bhakti Balabhatir to Maharaj. Ah, here it is. Okay, so sweet. Volume two. Here we go. Srila Jiva Goswami. Okay. According to the Gorgonadesha Deepika, Srila Jiva Goswami was, you know which Manjari name? Yes. Vilas Manjari. In his previous incarnation in Vraja. In verse 203 of the same book, it is stated that he was the son of Ballava. Uh, and a scholar of exemplary character, Sushila Pandita Sriman Jiva Sri Ballabhat Maja. That's in that verse. According to the Gaudiya Vaishnava Abhidhan, Jiva was present in this world uh, from 1511 of our calendar till 1596. So that means he was 85. When he departed, right? Other sources propose that Jiva's dates are from 1533 to 1618. So that's quite a difference 33, 11, yes. 22 years difference. Okay, so Jiva's early life. Srila Jiva Goswami appeared in the village. Jiva Goswami appeared in the village of Ramakali <clears throat> in the district of Malda as the son of Anupam Malik, that is Balaba, 
the other brother of Rupa and Sanatan, who had made his residence there in order to serve in the government. The name of Jiva's mother is not known. Narahari Chakravarti has given Jiva's genealogy going back seven generations. This list, as explained by Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Goswami Thakur, has been given here in this volume, in the chapter on Srila Rupa Goswami. So Jiva Goswami's father's original name was Balaba, but Mahaprabhu gave him the name Anupam. So we know him as Anupam. When Mahaprabhu came to Ramakali, he met Anupam for the first time. By his desire, a spirit of renunciation took root in Rupa and Sanatan upon meeting the Lord on that occasion. <clears throat> this led to their abandonment of their worldly duties and possessions not long thereafter, and they set off in an effort to be reunited with Mahaprabhu in Vrindavan. The same spirit of renunciation took hold in Jiva Goswami's heart at that time. Also, and as has been vividly described by Narahari in the Bhakti Ratnakara as follows. Here's the quote from Bhakti Ratnakara. Jiva's mind became distracted from the time that his two uncles went to Vrindavan. He abandoned his jewels and fine dress, his comfortable bed, and his various amusements. It was as though nothing interested him anymore. He could not bear hearing news of political and other material affairs. So Narahari summarizes Jiva's early life story as follows. In a dream, Jiva had a vision of Mahaprabhu dancing in the midst of Samkirtan. He was overwhelmed by feelings of divine love and soon thereafter left his home in Bakla Chandradvip. He had some companions who went with him as far as Fateabad, but from there he continued alone to Nagadweep. And there he met Nityananda Prabhu in the home of Srivas Pandit, and he received his blessings. Then Nityananda Prabhu told him at that time that he should go to Vrindavan. With fatherly affection, Nityananda touched Jiva's head with his feet. He showed incomparable mercy toward Jiva, lifting him from the ground and embracing him tightly. Transported by divine ecstasy, Nityananda Prabhu said, I rushed here from Kardaha for your sake alone. He said other things like this to pacify Jiva and then made Srivas Pandit and the other devotees give their blessings to Jiva. And after keeping Jiva there for some time with him, Nityananda Prabhu sent him off to the west. He said, hurry off now to Braja. That is the place the Lord has given over to your family. So that's a quote from Bhakti Ratnakar. It is not clear whether Jiva ever met Mahaprabhu directly, even though there is a hint in the Bhakti Ratnakara that Jiva was a baby when the Lord came to Ramakali. <clears throat> so thus, Jiva demonstrated an interest in devotion to the Supreme Lord from his early childhood. Even when playing with his friends, uh, he was only interested in games that were connected to the worship of Krishna. When Jiva was a little boy, he refused to play any game with the other boys that had no relation to Krishna. He made images of Krishna and Balaram and would worship them with flowers and sandalwood paste and dress and decorate them. He would gaze upon them with unblinking eyes, looking for all the world like a golden doll himself, sitting motionless on the floor. When he paid obeisances to the deities, his eyes filled with tears. He would offer their lordship sweets and then take the prasad and distribute it to his friends. Also a quote, Bhakti Ratnakar. <clears throat> Jiva goes to Vraja. By Nityananda's grace, Jiva was able to visit all the sacred sites in Navadvip Dam 
and after completing the tour of the Dham, he traveled to Benares, where he studied all the scriptures with Madhusudan Vachaspati. He was present. Madhusudan Vachaspati was present in Puri when Sarvabhom Bhattacharya was hearing. What? Oh, in Puri he was. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. He, he heard what Mahaprabhu told to Sarvabhom Bhattacharya about Vedanta. So later on, he went there, and that was, you know, then he instructed Jiva Goswami, and it's all Sanskrit and Vedanta and everything. So then Jiva went on to Vrindavan, where he remained under the tutelage of Rupa and Sanatana Goswamis. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Goswami Thakur has written the following about Srila Jiva Goswami in his Anubhashya to the Chaitanya Charitamrita. Quote, after the disappearance of Rupa and Sanatan, Jiva was established as the topmost teacher of doctrine in the Sampradaya. He engaged everyone in the worship of Krishna through teaching the truths given by Mahaprabhu himself. On occasion, he would sometimes do the Brajdan Parikrama with the other devotees, and sometimes he would go to visit Vitaldev in Mathura. <clears throat> Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami wrote the Chaitanya Charitamrita while Jiva was still alive. And not long thereafter, when Srinivas, Naratam, and Duki Krishna Das came from Bengal, he taught them and gave them the titles Acharya, Thakur, and Shamananda. He then sent them back to Bengal with all the scriptures that had been written by the Goswamis with instructions to preach the religion of the holy names and love of Krishna. <clears throat> he received the news of the loss of the scriptures and later of their retrieval. He gave the title Kaviraj to both Ramachandra Sain and his brother Govinda. And during his lifetime, Janava Devi and other devotees came to Vrindavan. When Bengali devotees came to Braja, he arranged for their vit victuals and lodgings during their stay. So that's from the commentary of Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati. The loss of the scriptures referred to in the above paragraph took place when agents of the king Vir Hambir of Vana Vishnupur stole them. Later, when the king heard Srinivas Acharya speak on the Bhagavat, he was converted to Vaishnavism and he took initiation from him. There's a samadhi of him in the Radha Damodar courtyard. Yeah. There's one of in those, all those little samadhi. There's Bir Hambir and his wife. So the books were recovered by Srinivas. All this is described in full in this volume and chapter 17 on Srinivas Acharya. Jiva's writings and controversies. In the Bhakti Ratnakara, a list has been given of 25 works ascribed to Jiva. Here's the list. Harinamamrita Vyakaran, uh, Sutra Malika, Datu Sangraha, Krishnarchana Deepika, Gopal Virudavali, Rasamrita Shesh, Madhava Mahotsav, Sankalpa Kalpa Vriksha, Bhavarta Suchaka Champu, Gopal Tapani Tika, Brahma Samhita Tika, Rasamrita Tika, Ujvala Tika, Yoga, Yoga Sar Stavak Tika, Agni Purana Sta Gayatri Bhashya, Padma Puranokta Krishna Pado Padma Chinna, description of all the markings on the lotus feet of Krishna and his associates. Sri Radhika Kara Pada Stita Chinna, and Radhika's lotus feet. Gopal Champu, Purva and Uttara divisions. Krama Sandarbha, Tattva Sandarbha, Bhagavat Sandarbha, Paramatma Sandarbha, Krishna Sandarbha, Bhakti Sandarbha, and Preeti Sandarbha. Those are the 25 books. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Goswami Thakur <clears throat> has given the following warning 
in his Anubhashya to those inexperienced persons who might be deprived of Krishna praying through the influence of ignorant and offensive Sahajiya teachings. Here's the quote. Three slanderous ideas about Jiva Goswami are current among the ignorant Prakriti Sahajiyas. Anyone who becomes influenced by these three, these calamities will increase his offenses and will end up losing his taste for service to the Supreme Lord because they are at the very root inimical to Krishna, the Guru, and the Vaishnavas. So the first one of these slanderous ideas. It is said that a certain Digvijay scholar, eager to amass mundane prestige, came to Rupa and Sanatana to get their signature as an admission of defeat in debate. Jiva's gurus conceded defeat without any argument, and the arrogant scholar proclaimed them to be nothing but ignorant fools. He then asked Jiva to also sign such an admission of defeat. Jiva, however, decided to take on the puffed-up Brahmin in debate in order to silence his scurrilous tongue. In this way, he preserved the integrity of his spiritual master's reputation, and he demonstrated the ideal behavior of one who is Guru Devatatma, that is, one who recognizes his spiritual master to be his worshipable deity and source of life. The ignorant Sahajiyas, however, say that Sri Jiva's behavior goes contrary to Mahaprabhu's teaching of being humbler than a blade of grass and of giving respect to Maha, uh, giving respect to others while demanding none for oneself. Indeed, Rupa Goswami chastised Jiva for this very reason and ostracized him for some time, but later Sanatan interceded on Jiva's behalf and had Rupa accept him again into his association. Quote, only when these enemies of the spiritual master and the Vaishnavas receive Krishna's mercy and begin to see themselves as their eternal servant, <clears throat> then will they also receive Jiva's blessings and be able to understand what, is really, what it really means to be humbler than a blade of grass and a giver of respect to all. Only then will they be eligible to chant the holy names in the proper way. So that's... Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati's defeat of that. Second point. Some other ignorant Sahajiyas uh, say that when he saw the manuscript of Chaitanya Charitamrita, with its clear language and his brilliant explanation of the divine devotional sentiments of Braja, that Jiva was afraid that it would hamper his own scholarly reputation and therefore threw it down a well in a spirit of mean-mindedness. This is what they claim. Upon hearing of Jiva's action, Krishnadas Kavaraj Goswami was greatly shocked and immediately gave up his body. Krishnadas's disciple Mukunda had fortunately made a copy of the original manuscript and thus it was preserved and later published. Had he not done so, the Chaitan Charitamrita would have been lost forever. This is another contemptible bit of invention based on an inimical attitude to the Guru and Vaishnava. It has no basis in reality and there is no possibility of its being true. Let's see how Sahajiyas can do to even Jiva Goswami. Unbelievable. Number three, the last point. According to other sense-obsessed fornicators, Srila Jiva Goswami should not be accepted as an exemplar because in his treatises he opposed the idea that the gopis of Vrindavan were married to other men the Parakiyavad, but rather supported the Svakiyavad. They say that he cannot be accepted as a Rasik Bhakta or a devotee who is knowledgeable in the divine sentiments. <clears throat> so here's the quote from Bhakti Siddhanta. The fact is that during Jiva's lifetime, some of his followers demonstrated a preference for the Svakiyavad. Jiva recognized their limitations, and so for their benefit and for the benefit of those in the future, who would be unable to comprehend the transcendental nature of the Parakiyavad, and they would try to practice adulterous relationships themselves in imitation of Krishna, he accepted the Swakiya doctrine. This is a sign of his acting as an Acharya. One should not take this as evidence of his being opposed to the transcendental Parakiyavad, however, for he is the topmost of Rupa Goswami's followers. <laughs> And he is one of Krishnadas Kaviraj Goswami's spiritual teachers. 
than Rupa's mercy to Jiva. Narahari has shown how Rupa Goswami instructed Jiva, punished him, and then blessed him in a story told in the Bhakti Ratnakara. <clears throat> One hot summer's day, while Rupa was riding Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu and Jiva fanning his perspiring body, Balabha came, uh, came by to see Rupa Goswami. <clears throat> After reading some of Rupa's introductory verses, he offered to make corrections. So when Balabha went to the Yamuna to take a bath, Jiva followed him on the pretext of going to fetch water. In fact, he was angry because he considered Balabha's proposal to be arrogant. He asked him what fault he had found in Rupa's verse. Balabha told him and Jiva immediately showed him the flaws in his argument. A debate ensued in which Jiva countered every one of Balabha's objections. And when he came back to Rupa's hut, Balabha told him how impressed he was with Jiva's scholarship recounting the entire episode. Then Rupa gently rebuked Jiva, telling him to return to Bengal and to come back to Vrindavan only when he was sufficiently calm. Thus banished from his presence, Jiva left Rupa Goswami's dwelling, but rather than going back to the family home, as he had been told, he went to Nandagat, a nearby village. And hoping to regain his guru's favor, he began to practice rigorous austerities, <clears throat> worshipping Krishna intensely while fasting or eating only a bare minimum. And as a result of such severe practices, his body became weak and sickly. And one day, Sanatan Goswami came by there and was moved when he saw his condition. He took Jiva with him back to Rupa and interceded on his behalf with his brother. Thus, Rupa and Jiva were reconciled, and Jiva, once again, won Rupa's affectionate blessings. The Jiva Goswami's appearance day is on Bhadra Shukla Dvadashi. His disappearance day is Paush Shukla Tritya. His deity, Radha Damodar is still being worshipped in the Radha Damodar temple in Vrindavan. His Samadhi tomb is on the grounds of the Radha Damodar temple and his Bhajan Kutir is preserved in Radha Kunda near Lalita Kunda. Srila Jiva Goswami Prabhupada Ki Jai. Srila Jiva Goswami's Transcendental Appearance Day Ki Jai. Srila Jiva Goswami Ki Jai. Nikai Gaur Prima Nandi Hari Hari Bhom Vansha Kalupatirubhyascha Kripa Sindhu Yena Jai Patitanam Pavanebhyom